I want to show you an Airtable that's easy and inexpensive, it costs less than $100, that you can make yourself. The Airtable lets you perform a number of mechanics experiments that I'll show in other videos. The top of the Airtable is a 2 foot by 2 foot piece of standard pegboard, so you don't have to cut out all those holes yourself. The frame of the table is formed by some 2 by 4s that are cut into a 2 foot square frame. The base of the table is a 2 foot by 2 foot piece of plywood that's 3 quarters of an inch thick. At the center of the base is a 1 and 1 half inch diameter piece of PVC tubing. This is the air inlet that pressurizes the table. There are four legs that have adjustable feet that let you level the table, which you'll need to do if you want to do physics experiments. So the one and a half inch piece of PVC tubing that forms the inlet fits into a one and a half to three inch PVC adapter, which in turn fits inside a three inch PVC coupler. The exterior diameter of the PVC coupler neatly matches the interior diameter of the 4-inch flexible ductwork that you'd find on the back of a dryer. The duct also neatly fits onto the Works Turbine 600 leaf blower, although I suspect you could use other leaf blowers as well. So I'm now going to use some computer animation to show you how to assemble the interior of the air table. The frame consists of sections of 2x4 pieces of wood. Now, it's very important when you buy your 2x4s that they have the right width. The actual width is 3.5 inches, not 4 inches, but needs to be exactly 3.5 inches. Take an accurate ruler with you to make sure the boards really are 3.5 inches thick. The red pieces are cut to a length of 24 inches, while the blue pieces are cut to a length of 21 inches, so all the wood could come from a single 8 foot long 2x4. Now the only precision cuts in the whole project are the cuts on the 21 inch 2x4s because they have to be very clean to butt up against the 24 inch 2x4s to form an airtight seal. If you don't have access to a table saw, you may be able to get your lumber store where you bought the 2x4s to make these cuts for you. I use a couple of two and a half inch wood screws at each corner to fasten the wood together. Next, I attach the two foot by two foot piece of three quarter inch plywood. You can often buy the plywood pre-cut so you don't need to cut this out yourself. Attach the plywood to the two by four frame with two and a half inch wood screws. I pre-drilled the holes that were slightly smaller than the screws before I attached the screws. This helps hold things together and prevents the wood from splitting. Drill a hole that lets the PVC pipe fit snugly in the center, about 1 and 7 eighths inch diameter. Get a short piece of 1 and a half inch PVC tubing about 3 inches long and press into the hole so that about 3 quarters of an inch sticks up inside the air table. This is the inlet through which the air will flow, pressurizing the table. Attach a piece of 1 and a half inch diameter PVC coupler shown in blue here to the tube to help hold it snugly in place. Now, you only want this to be at most one inch above the surface, so I had to cut the coupler almost in half so it wouldn't be too tall. Next, you want to add the green platform that sits over the air inlet. The platform consists of a 17 inch by 17 inch piece of one half inch thick piece of plywood mounted on four pieces of two by two boards cut into three inch length blocks. Now, it's important that these boards all have the correct thicknesses. The 2x2 two two boards are actually 1.5 by 1.5 inches, and the plywood really needs to be 1.5 inch thick. Some boards claim to be a half inch thick, but they're somewhat thinner, so get one that's really 1.5 inches thick. It doesn't have to be plywood, it could be melamine or fiberboard, but it needs to be a half inch thick. Use a single 1.58 inch wood screw to firmly attach the, each block to the plywood base, then use another screw to attach the platform to the blocks. Now the platform here serves two purposes. It diverts the airflow from the inlet, causing it to evenly pressurize the interior of the air table, but it also serves as a structural base to support the top surface of the air table. The top of the air table is held in place by a set of supporting blocks, each a half inch thick, cut from the length of two by two pine. The cuts do not actually have to be exactly one half inch thick, 
but they need to be both wide enough to form a firm support, but narrow enough not to block the air holes. I used 16 pieces evenly spaced that were placed on top of the 17 inch platform. Now the top of the air table is formed from a two by two foot piece of pegboard that is pre-cut with quarter inch holes spaced at one inch intervals. I bought a two foot by four foot piece of pegboard and cut it in half. I made sure that the supporting blocks weren't blocking the air holes by first gluing them to the top of the air table using wood glue and then gluing the supports to the platform. The top of the air table consists of a frame cut from one inch by two inch pieces of pine and attach the table using one and five eighths inch wood screws. These both hold the frame and the top of the air table firmly in place. The leaf blower is very noisy, so you may want to get yourself some ear protection when you use the table. Here we see a foam rubber sponge moving frictionlessly along the surface. Thanks for watching.